Uh, the three of you begin moving out towards the, the pack of the hyenas, and eventually you get close enough to where uh, Poco slows down, and uh, Volo and Struthio uh, hop off. Um, uh, Struthio looks up at you and says, here's where we're going to be doing it. This is far enough to, for to Poco? Well, Poco's going to be walking back a short distance. Okay. He's very fast. We'll be able to call him later if we need to. Okay. Um, and with that, uh, Poco uh, gives gives a little snort and then runs off uh, back in the direction of Aleister. Um, Struthio puts a hand on you and a hand on Volo, and you all explode in this... Uh, in, I guess Bane's dead. You explode into guts and little bits. Bane's dead, guys. Um, you explode in this uh, uh, burst of like arcane energy, uh, very similar to when you had the charm on, uh, but this one feels a little bit stronger. Um, uh, you see Struthio turn to you, and he simply raises a finger to his face uh, in a shush motion uh, before crouching down. Uh, go ahead and roll stealth with advantage. All right. <laughs> Eight. Eight? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's very bad. It is quite bad, yeah. Eight, huh? <laughs> um, Am okay. I proficient in stealth? You are not proficient in stealth. Yeah, then it's eight. <laughs> okay. Um, so the three of you begin to like move through the old dry wild grass that's out here. Uh, um, you three move uh, out towards uh, where these hyenas are at. Uh, and you see um, the alpha is a lot larger uh, up close than it looked uh, then it was further away. Uh, this thing is maybe twice the size of the bigger Kuthric that you killed. Um, this thing is huge. Uh, it like walks around and leaves heavy, huge uh, paw prints in the, uh, in the ground. Um, the other two with you are just like staring at it and like watching the motions of the other smaller ones around it. Uh, what do you do? How close are we? Um, you're maybe like 200 yards away from where their little pack starts. Hmm. I mean, I think I. We observe, right? Look at how how they, they interact and move around uh, closer to them, and like study them some more. So I don't know a bit. Like, I don't think I want to go close to this big pack. <laughs> you don't want to go to this big pack of like gross, weird bile wolves. I would be fine if it wasn't bile. <laughs> That's valid. Um, what do you want to roll here? I'll give you information based on whichever you choose to roll. Insight? <laughs> okay, yeah, sure. I guess insight you... and, like, how big of a threat is this? Like, what, like, like, how, how do I feel up close? Like, how, like, what... What feeling does Bane get being this close to, to this pack and in relation to the, the city and just everything that's going on? Like, what is the feeling that Bane gets? Uh, yeah, go ahead and That's how say. Bane sort of, like, operates most of the time. Okay. Uh, 21. Okay. Um, approaching this thing feels similar to when... Uh, like a lifetime ago, you and a certain squire at the time fought a goblin snake in the middle of another plains. Um, it's intimidating and it's scary. Uh, but despite this, you know that 
the three of you might be able to take care of these guys. If Risa was here with you, that might would increase a little bit. Um, but you still fear, or you still feel an uncertain fear growing within you. Um, and you're not certain on what to do next. Because since the last time you saw, the amount of these weird hyenas here has again increased. Uh, and even as you're just sitting here watching, you see uh, the alpha's teeth drip and another one of the hyenas just kind of like pops into existence again. Um, it is a scary feeling. The only way you're able to hold on to comfort is knowing that you're with these two. I guess I, I turn to them and I just, I want to look at them and I want to see like what, what they're making of this situation right now. Uh, I want you to roll perception. 15. Uh, looking at these two, you see that uh, Volo is not comfortable at all. He has his silver spear with him, but his grip on it is loose and his hands are shaking. He is very clearly worried and he you can see that play out in the way that his, his body is responding. Uh, his skin is slightly paler and you see sweat beads dripping down the side of his face. Struthio, however, remains vigilant and remains calm. Uh, despite despite the, the seemingly impossible odds that lay before the three of you, he seems steadfast and confident in his own ability. At least that's all you can tell. They are both intently watching, trying to absorb every bit of information that they can. Uh, what's the range of Mulder? 30 feet. Oh, no, not at all. Not at all, nah. Um, yeah, I think I, I continue to observe, and I think... I think I sort of, like, tap them on the shoulders, and I say, like... <sighs> um, roll persuasion. To those of you at home... That was me uh, shaking my head and pointing backwards and uh, like, yo, this is not a good situation. We should probably leave. Uh, 19. Okay. Um, uh, Volo turns back and he looks at you and he nods for a second. Uh, Struthio looks at you and he simply shakes his head no. Uh, he raises a finger and he turns back to the creatures. Uh, he stares at them eyes wide and he... Okay, yeah. Um, you watch as he... What did you do to Struthio? Okay. Uh, yeah, you see him kind of like take a deep inhale and close his eyes. And when he opens his eyes again, they're glowing brightly. Uh, and with these like new, fresh eyes, he looks out onto the field, and he takes a sharp inhale, and he gasps. And you watch him like stand up and begin to move backwards. He is quaking in his boots right now. Uh, he is sweating profusely, and he is just beginning to hyperventilate. Uh, staggering backwards, he just, like, takes a look at you two, and he says, we need to go right now. I think, yeah, I, you know, quickly, uh, but also stealthily, <laughs> like a mix of the two, uh, sort of in between, go to, uh, Poco. Um, Okay. Uh, as you begin to move stealthily, uh, you watch uh, Struthio just begin to bolt at full speed towards Poco. Um, he yells over his shoulder, don't even worry about that. And All right, I guess when, start running. When you begin to like set your feet to motion, you notice two things. Firstly, off to the north, 
there appears to be a storm swirling. The sky is cracking with this bright red lightning, and you can barely make it out. But there is something strange happening over there. Uh, you also feel a massive slamming on the ground. Give me a dexterity saving throw. 14. Okay. Um, you feel the entire earth beneath you just shake and quiver. Uh, and as you, uh, as you do, it shakes you to your very core and it knocks you down to the ground. Uh, scrambling around, you can see that both Struthio and Volo have fallen over as well. But pulling yourself off the ground, you can turn and you see what it was that made that earthquake. Standing taller than the Seer's Tower is an absolutely massive double-headed lion. Uh, its tail juts off into two uh, long uh, tails uh, that each end with their own plume. Uh, its two heads are snapping and are gnarling at each other. Uh, and the entire creature, which is bigger than anything you've ever seen, it's bigger than the mountain ranges of Mount Shizan and bigger bigger than the entire city of Rame itself, you figure. It just swirls with this black and blue and red energy like that of the other hyenas, the Alpha, and whatever it had been creating. What do you do? Let's go on poker and run. <laughs> um, you begin to uh, move, or you sprint your way over to Poco. Uh, go ahead and roll athletics. Uh, that is a 27. Okay. I think I, like, I pick up the people with me. Like, I go over to them and make sure, like, hey, like, let's fucking go. Like, don't be okay. distracted. Yeah, I, I definitely think Volo was, like, stuck there for a little bit, just, like, overcome with fear, and you just, like, grab him and scoop him up. Um, and you ran at 40, right? I ran at 40. Okay, yeah. So you, like, grab him and you scoop him up and throw him over your shoulder, and you, like, begin sprinting over to where Poco was, who is just, like, standing around and looking very scared and very worried at this point. And as you're running over there, the, the beast begins to move again, and another heavy footfall comes down and, like, shakes you around, but you're able to just, like, use that momentum, uh, use that little pop-up uh, to carry you forward. Uh, you eventually catch could up. I, could I move Earth to to make, like, uh, like they're, they're, like the step is coming, and then I move Earth to make this, the, like, Earth in front of us not unstable? Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. You, like, you, you feel, the, or you, like, look back over your shoulder, and you can see another massive paw coming down to the ground, and just before it touches down, you mold the Earth in front of you to make it steady and absorb all of the shock that's coming from this massive thing. Uh, you make your way closer and closer to uh, Struthio, who you are faster than at this point, and you just, like, scoop him up, too, and you get over to Poco, and you just throw all three of you on top of this thing, um, and you're now all on top of it. Uh, both Struthio and Volo are in shock. What do you do? I fucking just, like, shake them real hard, and I say, let's fucking go. Like, roll, um, roll charisma. <laughs> all right boys let's get up and leave oh man um both of them or struthio's eyes just like bolt open and he like takes off his veil uh uncomfortably and you see you haven't seen anybody this scared of anything in years uh, he looks at this massive beast, and you can see him running through his head. He has never seen anything like this. He has no idea what it is or how one could even begin to fight something like is that this. Something, is that, like, what I see going through his head? Like, I can see that he's thinking... Could I just smack him? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you, 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 you just give him uh, the, old, the old Bane slap. Um, and he, like, uh, he, he looks at you... And just like you can feel or you can feel 
the fear coming off of him. It I is, just point in the direction that we need to go. Uh, it, it, it's palpable, but as as you do, um, you see uh, Volo just like get up and he like bucks Poco, and you guys begin to like sprint off as fast as his little hog legs can carry you back to a Lannister. Um, at or in the horizon, you can make out that uh, there is no one in the guard shack right now. Uh, what do you do? There's no one in the guard shack? Mm -mm. Like, there were people keeping watch there before, right? There was one braver, yeah. The the one that had, like, the half-moon mask. Um, I think once I notice that, I say, Hey, do you notice that someone's not there anymore? Um, Volo doesn't say anything, but Struthio uh, kind of stammers. Yeah, there was someone there, a braver. He, I remember seeing him before we left. Could you still work your stealth magic on us? I can try. Um, and once again, he reaches his hands out to the both of you, and you kind of like explode in this uh, a puff of arcane energy. Listen, let's let's be cautious as we go on. All right. Um, Struthio nods. Bolo does not reply. For for all we know, it's they're probably just in a panic from from what we're seeing. They probably see it too, but. It's good to be cautious, so. Uh, roll charisma again. Fuck, it keeps landing in the... <laughs> uh, three. <laughs> it's so close to an at 20, though. Damn. Um, okay, yeah. Um, you all get to the gate of a Lannister and you hop off of Poco, uh, and everything seems quiet. Uh, the town has been evacuated for the most part, yes, and people have begun their expedition off to the east, but there is still a disconcerting quiet here. Um, what do you do? Listen, I think the best thing we can do is sneak our way to Rifa and just see what's going on with that god I hope I hope that she made that cell please please tell me it did Risa um go ahead and roll stealth do I have advantage yes uh that's a that's a tw that's a 19 okay okay so the three of you begin to make your way through this empty a Lannister. It is uncomfortable. You haven't been here long, but seeing it change from this, like, joyous party on the first night to this empty town is, is a little bit unsettling. Uh, you move further and further in, closer to Krasokia and, and Kaso's uh, tent, and you begin to hear the sound of something heavy banging against earth. Uh, you also hear the sound of snaps and gnarls. What do you do? I think I, I open the tent. I open the, like, flap. You open the tent, and you see Kaso sitting there with a, a massive bleeding wound on his shoulder, and you see Risa just like sitting in the corner holding her head in her hands and she has like erected this like wall of earth in between her and the back side of the room. You hear a lot of banging and snapping and growling coming from the other side of it. Uh, Kaso appears to be unconscious but Risa sees the three of you and she's She's not doing good. Her skin is paler than you've ever seen it before. And she looks at you, and she's not even able to form words. She tries to start a sentence, but she just can't. Uh, Risa? Or, yeah. Risa. <sighs> Fuck. Fuck. Hey... Kaso, was that wound from... Um, 
as soon as you say that, he like weakly opens his eyes and he just points towards the uh, the, the stone wall. Where's where's Latron? Latrons? Latrons. Latrons. Um. Uh. He shrugs to the best of his ability. What do you mean? Where did he go? Uh, he weakly says, I don't know. Did, so, did no one take out the bile? He did, yeah, but I'm guessing it was too late. For you, I mean. For me? What do you mean for me? Because you got bitten, right? Yeah. Fuck. I'm going to try to suck out some bile. Um, you, like, move over to him, and you, uh, you see the wound. Um, it is coarse and bloody. It is really, really messy. Uh, I want you to roll nature. Four. Whatever left these, uh, bite marks, um, it was small. These bite marks are significantly smaller than hyenas. Um, roll medicine. Uh, it's a ten. Okay. Uh, you put your mouth to his wounds and begin uh, sucking out his blood. Uh, like a vampire. Uh, uh, you begin sucking out his blood, and once again you feel the weird, like, uh, kind of thicker uh, bile-filled blood that you remember sucking out of your own wound. Uh, you spit it out on the, the ground, and you see the same thing you did when it was inside of you. Um, he looks at you, and he just mouths the words, I couldn't stop him, I'm sorry, before passing out. Um, Struthio. Uh, he, he, like, walks into the room, and he just, like, looks around at everything, and he, he, his veil is still off at this point, and he, like, brushes his hair back, uh, uh, across his head, and he looks at you, his eyes still wide with fear, and he just waits for you to speak. Struthio. I can't remember, was it you who took out, who took the bile out of me before? Uh, he shakes his head now. It was, it was the Trons, wasn't it? Yes. Right, sir. She, like, shakily looks towards you. Right, sir, I'm... I know, I know the situation... sucks. But... Could you... Could you tell me a bit about what happened, at least? Uh, roll persuasion. Uh, twelve. Um, she, like, pulls her hands to her head shakily, uh, and she just kind of, like, begins to shake her head, uh, no, no, no. Uh, she opens her, uh, or she moves her hands away and she opens her eyes, which at this point you can see are just bloodshot. Uh, she has been crying a lot. Um, she just keeps saying, I tried, I tried to stop him. Chrysokion, oh God, Chrysokion, he's, oh God. And that's all she's able to get out. At this point, you see Latron's, uh, or sprint their way into the room with a huge pack on their back. Um, they set down a bunch of medical supplies and they move over to Caso and Latron's, they- Latron's, please. Could you take out the bile first? That's exactly what I'm doing, yes. Uh, he, like, moves, or they move over to Caso, and they once again, like, produce the, uh, the arcane orb, uh, that sucked out the bile from your body, uh, and they get as much of it out as they can, and they, like, uh, throw it to the side in this, like, a small orb. He, or they, uh, take some, some bandages and wrap up the wound, and uh, as this is happening, they say, without turning to you, how did, the, how did the scouting go? Is everything all right out there? Listen, we need to leave. We need to leave? What do you mean? We need to fucking leave. What's happening? Uh, and as soon as they say that, uh, another massive 
uh, uh, paw slam shakes the ground. Um, everybody in this room, uh, except for Struthio and Volo, just like turn and look at you. The fear in their eyes overwhelming. Uh, what do you do? I'll say, I'll tell you everything that you deserve to know, but this isn't the time. We need to leave. And I'm sorry, Raisa, but we need to leave. We need to leave him behind. As you say that, she, like, she coughs, uh, uh, choking back tears, um, and her body like writhes as she moves her hands up to her face to like wipe away these tears that have just come pouring out of her eyes like a faucet. Um, she just, she nods and she begins like walking outside uh, of the tent. Um, Latrons tells you to um, pick up, uh, Latrons tells you to pick up Caso over uh, your shoulder and um, be prepared to to move and, and hold on to hold on to Caso. I'm I'm prepared to do that. You step outside into the streets and you see Volo sitting on Poco, still looking out to the west at this gargantuan beast that just appeared in their plains. And you see him clutching his spear, still terrified and mad and just confused. Um, Struthio jumps up on the back of Poco, and Latrons follow suit as well. Risa, however, creates a, uh, a another earthboard beneath you and uh, the unconscious at this point, Caso. Um, she looks towards the, the tent one last time before you all jet off to the east. Uh, you get to the opposite side of the town, and that's when you feel something strange. Give me a constitution saving throw. Oh boy. That's not bad. That's a 25. Okay. Uh, all right. The scar on your chest pulsates stronger than it ever has before. And this time, it hurts. It hurts to high hell. Uh, every fiber of your being is just racked with this strange, uncomfortable energy. It feels like you're dying again. However... You're able to hold on. You don't lose your balance, and you don't let this unusual stirring inside of you uh, do anything to sway you from standing with your new compatriots. However, as you're looking outward to the east, you see a star twinkle in the night sky. And it disappears and it comes careening towards you. Volo and Poco are worried by this, and you see that Volo just pulls Poco to a screeching halt when this happens, and Risa begins to slow down her earthboard a little bit. Um, and then the star comes careening down and lands... Hmm? Could I get off the board and just tell them, go, keep going, run? Uh, yeah, roll charisma. 14. Um, uh, you, you yell out to everyone and they quickly regain their composure. Uh, you place Kaso from your shoulder onto the earth board and Risa kind of makes like a gurney for him. Uh, and they continue to move, uh, out to the east. You stand in the middle of this uh, alleyway of sorts, and the last thing you see of them is them disappearing 
behind a bright, shimmering humanoid figure who's not standing there, he's floating, and he is positively radiant, almost blindingly so. He hurts to look at you. But after that initial brightness fades, you see him and you recognize him. Arias moves towards you, a smile plastered on his face, and he looks behind you to the gargantuan, double-headed lion that is standing in the plains, and he looks back at you, and he says, You certainly found a good time for me to need you, huh, buddy? a deep bow. Uh, another heavy paw print hits the ground, shaking it. He looks at you, and he kind of floats past you, and he looks at this double-headed lion, and he says, Think, I see of all people in the back. Absolutely wild. Absolutely wild. But, regardless, baby, and he turns to you. It's, uh... It's time for me to call in that thing. And he snaps his fingers. And with that, everything around you disappears. And you find yourself in a small, cold, dark room. find yourself in this cold, dark room. Uh, the ground is rocky and mountainous, and the scar on your chest is pulsating uncomfortably. At the other side of the room stands the Star Herald himself, Arias. He looks at you, and he says, Bane, you didn't use my gift once. I didn't need to. Yes, that's true. That's true. But not even once. You fought so hard to try and find anything you could aside from what I gave you. Why is that? It scares me. I suppose you do have a right to fear me. But I assure you, Bane, that everything that could happen to you, that I am capable of, already has. What does that mean? Um, he points to the scar on your chest, and with two fingers, just like... Uh, makes the hilt appear as he turns his hand upside down and pulls from out of your scar. I'm going to push it back in. <laughs> uh, you can try... No. No. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, no. <laughs> um, you know what? It would be cool to watch this. Uh, go ahead and roll a strength contest. Or roll athletics. Can I rage? Yes, he can rage. This, this is a good moment to be raging in. Natural 20. Alright, so one natural 20. Uh, what's that number total? Uh, 29. Okay. Um, he begins to pull the axe out of your chest. You see more and more of it at this point. It is long, and its body is wicked and cracked as it comes out. Uh, you begin to, like, pull against him and just like try to put it back into your body uh but just the raw unfiltered power of a god directly in front of you is too much and he yanks it out of you 
uh, in front of you is this weird double-handed battle axe that is massive and just swirling with stars. Um, he lowers it to your feet and he says, just one hit with this thing would have been something. Why not just one? I don't rely on cheap tricks for my strength. He smiles as you say that. And he laughs and he laughs. And one second you blink and he's there. And the next second he is in your face and the entire room is dark and star studded. And he whispers into your ear, I assure you. Thanius Bane, my power is not a cheap trick, and it would be wise of you to never make the mistake of saying something so stupid ever again. What do you do? Fine. But my strength isn't a cheap trick either, and I'll fight. I'll do your missions or whatever but I'll do them my way the darkness in this room draws back into him as he turns around and he snaps his fingers and the axe at your feet disappears and you feel it take place back in the scar in your chest he walks to the other side of the room uh, and with a hand wave he reveals a massive uh, view over a continent that you're not familiar with. He points out to the north, and you see a familiar sight, a place you haven't seen since before you died. You see rain, and it is bathed in golden light, and above it is a storm, red lightning cracking through the sky. He points towards the orb that hovers above the city, bathing it in this gold light. And he looks back to you and he says, Bane, I'll let, I'll let you know you one thing. My end goal is to get, to get whatever, whatever that, that is. is. You, you and your friends are going to help me with that. Your new friends, as it were. And with that, he snaps his fingers and into the room uh, fades a massive table. Uh, he is stood at the head of the table, not looking towards it, but looking out. Uh, and you see, uh, going clockwise from your left, you see an empty chair and you see uh, a space where Arias is standing. You see a small gnome uh, sat in a chair. Next to her, you see a older looking man wearing worn clothing. Uh, he awkwardly fidgets about and he looks incredibly uncomfortable. Next to him is sat an older uh, woman. She bears a great sword on her back. And next to her is a face that you haven't seen in so long. The face of your apprentice, Carpenter. And she looks up at you, worry in her eyes.
Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> What does that mean? <laughs> what does all this mean?